The following interview is being conducted with Ruth Davis Braun for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It's taking place on November 25th, 2019 at 1 o'clock p.m. in Lafayette, Indiana. The interviewer is Katie Watson, the France A. Cordova archivist. Okay, so Ruth, um, could you please tell me a bit about uh, your early life, so like where and when you were born, um, a bit about your family as well? Okay. Um, I was born December 2nd, 1920, at the home hospital in Lafayette, Indiana. My parents uh, was James P. Davis and Elsie Cole Davis. Um, and uh, I was born, uh, on, on, we weren't on the farm at that time, but my dad worked on the farm because his father was still living at that time. But um, I don't remember anything about where we lived or anything at that time. I can start pretty good at uh, uh, when I went to school, mm -hmm. and that's a kind of an interesting area. Uh, the schoolhouse was a, a it was a one room schoolhouse, and it was across the road from our lane, so it was very close to where I lived. Um, there were two people in the first grade. There were 12 or 13 children in the one-room schoolhouse, and most of them were seventh and eighth graders, so it was, and then most of those were boys. And so Mary and Noblet and I in the first grade, we did a lot of writing because the teacher was a new teacher, and she was had her hands full actually with the older ones, so we that's the reason we that's the reason we could write. And I I when the state the county um, uh, premiership championship at the end of the year. What does that take? Hmm. Um, after the and then the first grade and second grade. We were the uh, all the uh, one room schoolhouses were closed, and they were consolidated in a larger school. And that the name of that school was Crouch School. And so I went to the first, second, and third grade at Crouch School. We were bused during that time to the school, and then the uh, township. I don't know whether it was a state rule or just a county rule, but they allowed the parochial children that went to parochial schools in Lafayette. The could, sorry, what schools? The the pro per, uh, parochial schools. Okay. Does that make sense to you? I don't know what that is. So, well, that be like the Catholic schools, oh, the Lutheran okay. schools. That okay. were, were separate in Lafayette, okay. so we got a ride then into the city, and we went to the St. James Lutheran School then. Okay. So I went to St. James between the third grade to the eighth grade, and uh, we didn't didn't have to walk too far because it was right across the street from Jefferson High School, where the high school kids oh. went. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we didn't have very far to go. So during that time. And uh, that was an interesting time because we got out of school a little early because Jeff left out earlier, so we could get home. Um, after that, when I, I went to uh, Purdue for two and a half years, and at that time I uh, Maybe I should just talk to, to you a little bit. The reason I went to Purdue was because who, where else would you go when your father graduated from <laughs> Purdue? <laughs> <laughs> so there was no, hardly no question. I do remember, though, that the, my parents let me uh, con. Oh, I put an app. I didn't put an application, but an information from a, a, a girl's school in, in New York.
York, I think it was. Now, I I don't remember what the school was, but the, it was a girls' school. Okay. Well, they, I wasn't eligible because I didn't have French. Oh, okay. So, uh, there, but that was a... Well, and when, one other thing, I wanted to, thought I wanted to be a teacher, and I thought I should go to two-year teacher college. Well, that wasn't right. I, they had thought I should go to Purdue, so I went to Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> now at Purdue, um, when we, he took me over to Purdue, and I talked to the dean of school, and um, he sort of insisted that we live at, and on campus to get campus life. So we, we, um, and so they, they, and of course, being a farmer, you don't have much money. And they, uh, uh, they were farming twin pines. So I uh, enrolled in and lived at twin pines for, for a couple of years. Uh, Twin Pines was, uh, there were 19 girls that lived, in the, and the idea of co-ops was we all did our own, the, the work of the house and did our cooking and cleaning, mm -hmm. so it was all divided. I also worked at the Cary Home. I worked uh, 10 hours a week at Cary Home for 25 cents an hour. <laughs> and what did you do at Cary Home? Well, this is a, that's an interesting thing. They were um, at that time they furnished all the, the sheeting to, on the beds and everything. So this was at the beginning of the year when I started in September, and uh, they. Um, they took the old sheets that were worn, worn and tore them into rag size to make, and I hemmed them. So they tore them into have, have, uh, rags for washing dishes and whatever they did, used them for. Then they, I had to hem them. That was the purpose of my work at first. Well, of course, I got that done. So they put me in helping with them. So, uh, figuring of the payroll, doing things in the, uh -huh. in the, in the office part. Mm -hmm. So I did office work down that for the, for, for the th three, the two and a half years I went to Purdue. Oh, awesome. So you got some pretty good work experience while going to Purdue. I did. <laughs> Great. Um, but you, so before you attended Purdue, you met Amelia Earhart, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, uh, it was a, in a class at uh, Jeff, and it was a home ec class, and our teacher uh, was Miss Gaddis, was it, our teacher, and, and she took us on field trips. And we this was a field trip that we took to Purdue to see the new girls dormitory this was when it was first opened and that was the first dormitory that mm. they had at Purdue and um, and of course um, uh, we all knew that Amelia Earhart was at Purdue I mean that's anything that happened to Purdue we knew about the whole town <laughs> knew about <laughs> but anyway after we had gone through the school we came to, to leave we came, started coming out the entranceway, and as we were getting, going out, this lady walked in. Of course, everybody knew who she was immediately, and uh, so she stopped, and she uh, asked us what, what we are. My uh, the grand teachers told her that we were there on a trip. So she went around and talked to each one of us, shook oh, our wow. hands, asked our name, and some of them she asked what they were there, what they were going to do or something, you know. And um, so she had a, she was really friendly. So she, after she was finished, she 
wished us all well, and but it was, I get my impression of her. I thought she was not very tall, and of course she had pants on. <laughs> that was the, that she was different than anybody else. Nobody wore pants unless they went on a picnic or something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's what how I met her and talked to her. That's amazing. She she was really friendly. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know she was a, a teacher in the in the engineering uh, during that time. Mm -hmm. She wasn't here. Wasn't at Purdue. What, what maybe one semester, two semesters? Yeah, it was pretty short. I think she was there ended 1935 until um, you know 1937. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that she was back and forth, and but this mm -hmm. was in 19. 36. Oh, okay. Because I was a, probably a sophomore in high school. Sophomore? Okay. And then did you mention that your teacher was Miss Gaddis? No. If I did, that's not right. Oh, okay. I may have uh, missed her. She, uh, her name was something like that, but no, it wasn't Miss Gaddis. It wasn't Lola Gaddis. Okay. I did know her, though. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did meeting Amelia Earhart influence your decision to go to Purdue at all, or was that mostly your father? Oh, I think that was mostly my father. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd check. Yeah. yeah. Um, so can you tell me a bit about uh, where you lived? So you mentioned that your father um, really wanted you to live on campus. Yes, that's the reason, that's the reason I was, they uh, signed me to, uh, but at that time it was Twin Pines. This was a new girls co-op. And uh, so they were assigned uh, people to it. And that's how I got into it. it was, I was assigned to that school, that place to live. Mm -hmm. Because I, need, I needed some place that wasn't as expensive as the residence hall. Oh, okay. So the co-ops were less expensive? Oh, well, I was, you want me to tell you how much it cost? If you remember, that'd be great. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, the, 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 at least at the first, the first, I think the whole time I was at the co-op, they were $19 a month, and that included our, our meals uh, and our living. And... Um, can you imagine? <laughs> no. <laughs> My rent is significantly higher. <laughs> Did you make your own meals? When you yeah, oh, yes. We made oh. our, oh, yeah. We, made, we had a, a person that was a was the uh, kitchen kind of manager, and she made the menus out, and then, and then you, you, you helped with breakfast, or you helped with lunch, and you did, you did the, the cooking, and or you did the clean up, and and uh, so after it was set up, why everybody knew what they were going to do, and it changed. Okay. Uh, you cleaned the bathrooms, and people that didn't have a bath, they came home from houses, homes that did not have bathrooms. Oh, wow. We had a lot, a lot of people that did, they learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it would be a very valuable um, experience for a lot of students. Yeah. Uh, so did you, like, alternate, so people alternated chores in the house? Like, was there, you know, like a chore chart or something like that? Uh, to, what, what do you mean by Oh, did they, so who assigned chores? Oh, or did you just figure it out? No, yes, no. The, usually we had the, the kitchen person assigned her chores. Then we had another person that was kind of the, the cleaning lady. And so we had, um, and she assigned, to, we did the dining room floors or you did the living room and you kept it dusted. You, some things, sometimes you were supposed to dust things every day, but they didn't always get done. But then they were in charge of doing with that. Okay, great.
Do you still keep in touch with any of the women that you... Well, I did one. My one roommate, I talked to her until she passed away, maybe 10 years ago. No, I did for a while, but they all got away. Yeah, <laughs> just drifted <laughs> and apart. And I was, I, in our 75th, I was the oldest one there. So, uh, and uh, they said that there weren't too many that graduated in the, in the uh, 40s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Over there. Okay. And then, so, this co-op was originally called Twin Pines, but the name changed, the right? Name, yes, the name changed when I was a junior. So I was in on that when that, that was really hard for the girls. After we were, oh, we were two years of Twin Pines. And then when they were in the, that would have been in the, 40. And when uh, uh, Carolyn Shoemaker, I can't, I can't remember whether she was, she was something in the uh, administration. Was she a, was she a, um, uh, she wasn't the dean of girls, but maybe she was an assistant or something. Yeah, I think from what I've read anyways, she was an informal kind of dean of women, but yeah, not quite. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then when she passed away, she left $1,500 to the, to be used by the girls in some, in some way. And they decided, uh, Mr. Uh, Stewart, the, part, the um, treasurer of the Purdue, Mm -hmm. It was sort of in on that, and so they decided that that it should go to one of the girls' co-ops. So, okay. so and, it, and that was. I don't think they asked us to change names. I just think that the, that the the uh, people and the officers decided that we should change and her their name to to Shoemaker House. Okay. Great. I remember that I was on the board. They had a co-op board uh, from all the other co-ops, and I was on that. And that, and then at, at that time, and that concerned all of them because they, not all of them ever got money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were the lucky ones, I guess. <laughs> uh, what did you do on the co-op board? I was, I I was a secretary. And I call him up, but you know, um, this uh, Mr. Stewart, who was a trade, he did most of it, and his secretary took all the notes, and all I did was read them. <laughs> so, <laughs> it wasn't a hard job at all. That's kind of nice. <laughs> uh, what was the purpose of the co op board? Well, I think it was just to keep the co ops uh, in their, uh, together. Because we did, we had dinners back and forth, and we had dances back and forth with the, with the boys co-ops. So, like one co-op would host a dinner uh -huh. or a dance. Uh -huh. We did, we had one sometimes that, that um, I don't know how often we had. Maybe once a month we had a co-op uh, dinner, and one of the boys club, uh, would send some of their boys over to our house and the girls would go to over here. And they, they didn't all go. It was maybe, I don't know how, I think it was more whoever wanted to go. Okay. I think. I, and did the boys co-op ever host the women for dinner or anything? Oh yes, that they changed back and forth. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. So they cooked for you? Oh well, sure. Awesome. That's great. And we cook for them. <laughs> great. Um, and what year did you start at Purdue? I started in uh, 1938. 1938, okay. And what was um, what was your major when you went to Purdue? I was home ec. Home ec? All girls went at home ec. Okay, there were, yeah, there I were, there, there were, there, <laughs> we, we did have one girl that was in engineering. Oh, okay. Like it, in, the, in the beginning. It, I don't know, I wonder if she 
Stay, is she, I think she stayed all four years. Oh, okay. Do you remember her name? Kathleen Lux. And how many years did you stay at Purdue? I was there two and a half years. Okay. And so did you finish your degree in home ec? No, I did not graduate. Okay. Why, what, did you get a job out of school or something? What? Well, I had a sister that came in to Purdue that year and, um, I know how much it was costing, and and besides that, way all my friends were getting jobs because it was before the war, and they were having everybody worked mm -hmm. in some place, and um, I was between my sophomore and junior year in that summer. I worked at Fairfield, in the, and um, I liked it. I was really, and I. I look back now and I think that that's probably one of the reasons that I decided that I liked that. Mm -hmm. And I, so then I, when I quit Purdue, I went to work in Fairfield and then I worked there until I had my first baby. Oh, well. <laughs> which made me, which they made you quit. You didn't work. When you showed you, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've read some of those policies. <laughs> <laughs> And so how many years did you work at Fairfield then? Do you remember? <laughs> I guess when did you have your first baby is a better question. In 44. 44, okay. And what did you do at Fairfield? Well, I did a very, various things. I was a sales manager's secretary. I was a meteorologist's secretary. <laughs> And I worked in the payroll. I I just kind of worked wherever they needed me. Okay. Because I could type, and and I I had bookkeeping in high school. Oh, okay. I sh I really should have known that I was interested in that because I didn't have to take bookkeeping in high school. That was just something I took. Because you wanted to. Because I wanted to. <laughs> And was, I guess, was bookkeeping very similar to like a mathematics course that they would teach in That's school? They called them mathematics. Okay. And then what is, um, so Fairfield, what kind of company is that? Um, it's a manufacturing company. They made um, pinions and ears Okay. for helicopters at that time. Oh, oh that was okay. one of the places. I think. Oh, okay. And then, is that where you met your husband? No, I met him in church. I went to church. He went to the same church I did. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to circle back a bit to your time at Purdue. Um, what, when you were there um, in Home Ec, what types of courses did you take? Well, um, clothing. Or sewing. I took chemistry, which was a required in English. History. History was one of my things I took, uh, elective. Chemistry I took, which I liked, liked very much. I like chemistry. And we, we sewed. Of course, I was a 4 -er, so I was had, with new people from the, from the um, foods and from the, the clothing things. So, but those were things just I did at home, so they were just repeats. Okay, <laughs> easy for you. <laughs> they were easy for me. But I think you always use, I don't care what you do, you, you always learn something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always learn e something. Even new. now I learn things. That's good. <laughs> And then were most of your the faculty who taught uh, your courses, were they mostly women? Well, 
the, of course, the, the, the uh, home ec courses were mostly women, and and there are the um, uh, uh, athletic courses. And of course, we had that. You had to take two years of of um, gym. They called it. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And of course, well, I learned to play. Well, it was field hockey, and uh, they, had, every, they had six weeks. I learned swimming and dancing. We played volleyball, and uh, it was just it was a variety. And if you had extra money and you could do, they had bowling, oh, wow. and also uh, horses. Uh, oh, horseback riding. Horseback riding. Oh wow. Those those were you had to pay extra for those things, but mm -hmm. but th that was kind of interesting because you met all girls, and wherever they lived, mm -hmm. in, the, in the gym. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, so you met them from around campus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Then and they, they were women that taught that. Now men were the ones that taught the chemistry. I don't remember. Offhand, I don't remember any uh, uh, females in the chemistry or that part mm -hmm. English. However, there were English teacher. There was an English teacher that was a lady at that time, mm -hmm. but I didn't have her. Okay. Did you have a favorite course when you? We're at Purdue? Or like was there one that stood out? Well, I I liked chemistry, believe it or not. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I like and I that I always kinda look forward to. And I was interested in history. I can't say that there was anything that was really favored. Okay. Were there any uh, faculty members that particularly stood out to you? No. No? Okay. And then, were you, other than being involved on the co-op board, uh, were you involved in any other school activities? Like intramurals or no. society? I did, I, I did take a, a rifle. Uh, What do we call it? We went and had to go with the off the armory and, and learn to use a rifle. Really? Oh, wow. I can't, I don't, can't I know. But that was just like a six weeks course. Okay. I did that. You know, when you work and when you had worked in your house, you didn't have very uh, much time and yeah. you didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. If you had him uh, five cents, maybe you could get a coke over at the union once in a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be a nice treat. Um, can you tell me more about the rifle course that you took, the six week? What was that a new thing at the time? I think it was. Okay. And, and uh, it was the uh, the officers that were in charge. I just think they asked. They, I know they came to the house and had said they were going to have girls. And I don't remember, there were maybe 10 or 15 mm -hmm. girls and we went over to the armory. And of course they have a rifle um, set up down in the basement. And we went there, I think once, once a month or maybe it wasn't, but it was about six weeks time. Okay. And then, so you just learned how to use a rifle? All right. Okay. That was all. Yeah? <laughs> I don't, we didn't have any competition or anything. It was just, it, it was something to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you, I guess, other than, like, the dinners and stuff that you did at the co-ops, um, and I know you said you didn't have have much time for extracurriculars. What did you do for fun on campus? Well, the, they did have a lot of dancers, the, the co-ops. So we had, maybe had dance, maybe 
when well, lots of times when we had the dinners, then sometimes we'd turn the radio on. Of course, you could always get dance music on the radio. Um, I did go play cards one time with a was a with a um, grad student and with the ladies and the, and the the husbands and the wives. One time I went with a oh. grad student. <laughs> I often wonder what his name was, but I don't remember. <laughs> but oh, okay. I didn't keep a a, um, a diary, which I should. I think people should keep diaries and put names in them. Yeah, it's hard to remember otherwise. <laughs> okay, great. He probably lived in the co one of the co-ops. You know, uh, okay, and that's how you met him? That's how I met him. Oh, yeah, we met a lot of our boys that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we went with each other. It, it, you'd be surprised. We didn't go with just one. If we went with one, then maybe... The other, well, the other girls. Next week, could have a date with the same one. I mean, that was... Oh, okay. So it wasn't was, exclusive. No, it wasn't there. Yeah. There were a few of them, the, the juniors and the juniors girls. When we started, we had one senior and two two juniors. And they had, the, the juniors had, one of them had a, a study boyfriend. Mm. Is there anything particular that you remember from campus, like any place that you particularly hung out or like to spend time? Well, um, no, not really. The um, We did, uh, if you went and did anything, you went to the Union for uh, Coke or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Was Poppy's there at that time? The restaurant and the downstairs of the union? No, the sweet shop. The sweet shop? Okay. That was it. Yeah? Yeah, there's a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. that so that, many options. Yeah. Well, after all, there was only 700 girls at Purdue at that time. Maybe Okay. Maybe six or eight, six, seven thousand boys. Wow, that's a big difference. <laughs> so, so it served our needs mm -hmm. to one to, to one place to go, and and all, uh, also this was at the end of the depression, and people didn't have money, mm. the extra money. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's a huge um, difference between male and female students. So were there there must have been way more housing, like co-op housing and residence housing for men than women. Yeah, there were there were three or four boys' houses. Rochdale was one. There was, there was a one that was Luma House. Chauncey House, I think, came in maybe after I was just shortly after I was maybe the second year when I was there mm -hmm. and uh, and there was another girl's house and um, there were girls that stayed in homes to they roomed it and there were boys but there were a lot of people who had people that I lived in after afterwards in the west side the people who had four or five boys that lived in their in their houses. Okay. So there were a lot of people, and but there were there were some that drove that lived at home. Okay. And drove in. Mm, okay. Yeah. And then, were there any um, different rules for female students than male students? Well, there were a lot of rules for girls. <laughs> 
when the, my you had to be in at weekdays you had to be in at nine o'clock and you didn't leave until seven in the mornings mm -hmm. uh, now weekends I think it was eleven o'clock you could be out at eleven and on occasions at twelve it depended sometimes they had a big dance uh, the uh, armory the boys in the service See, every boy had to be went to our OTC, mm -hmm. so they they had dances and, and uh, so those were special. Okay, so you got to stay out a little later. Yeah, so we got to stay a little later. When I uh, met my husband, I was still I started I was still in school, and um, the first date he, he it was in the fall before. He called and asked me to go with him and two or three other two or three other couples to Clifty Falls for the day. It was on a Sunday. Well, in order for me to leave at six o'clock I had to go over and talk to the Dean of Women's and I got special permission for the house mother that she opened the door for me to leave at six o'clock. Now I got home all right, but I, they, they went that Clifty Falls was do you know where Clifty Falls? No. Well, it's down by Cincinnati. It's oh, uh, okay. it's a state park. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a little, little distance. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that was a special thing, and if you wanted to do that, of course we had a house mother, and she locked the doors every night at whatever time you. And uh, she opened the doors in the mornings. Nobody left until they were. <laughs> they were pretty strict about girls. Mm hmm. Did anyone ever try to sneak out? Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I know it, it wasn't. No one ever did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, who was the Dean of Women at the time? Do you remember? Dorothy Stratton. Did you meet, like, did you interact a lot with her? Well, I talked to her a couple of times when mm -hmm. I went, at one time, I know I had to go. There was another, uh, her name was Ka Calvert. Okay. And that's who we did most of our, if we had problems or anything, we talked to. Okay. And were there any other pol policies for women that there weren't for men? So other than the hours policy? I can't think of anything really. They just, women were supposed to act like women. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we, of course, uh, there were not very many that wore, wore slacks, but most the women wore dresses. I don't know that the slacks were not, um, were off limits, but it, it wasn't just the time mm -hmm. for, for, for slacks. Okay, just wasn't common. And, and we didn't smoke in our house either. Oh, were the men allowed to smoke in their houses? I can't remember, but I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know either. <laughs> I no, I know. I just don't know. But w the women were not. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Now I do know that there were women that went out and, got, went out and smoked. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, that was very few. Okay. At that time. Of course, now it's back to that again. That it may be not a rule, but women just don't smoke. There are few. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, smoking in general is just becoming less common. Um, do you have any other memories from Purdue that you want to share? Well, I might tell you that they had convocations that were free. Oh, okay. 
And they they were really special people because it was people that I know the senior when we first went to when I first went in Shoemaker House senior we had one senior and she says be sure to take in complications they're free and she says you'll never see people like they are which they did we had opera singers and all, and all oh, wow. the band. we had like Chicago Symphony I mean they were really uh, we didn't there wasn't the uh, things like there are now the musical things mm -hmm. but they were more classical things okay that sounds like an amazing experience yeah and it was they, they had really had some really famous people that they became if you if you were interested shall i say but it's still they were busy people went to, the students went to them that's great. See, they built the, the uh, um, Hafty Hall, see, was just built at uh, that time. Oh, okay. I, I, went to, I did go to the opening of that. I forgot about that. Oh. What did they do for the opening? Well, they had, um, I used to know two opera singers. They had, I wish I could remember, I didn't, and I didn't, so. Uh, I didn't think about that. Did uh, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> but they were famous. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a special program. And I think they had uh, had two, ti two times that they were there for the, oh, for the opening. Cool. Um, so... Moving on to after you left Purdue. So you worked at Fairfield Manufacturing for a few years until you had oh, your first child. Um, so because you took a home ec degree, did what you learn in home ec kind of prepare you for life as a mom? I don't know. I, I went through it as we were growing up. I was the oldest in the family, so I had all those things, the young ones that I, I did what mothers do, <laughs> the helpers. Okay, so you helped take care of your siblings. I did. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and remind me, how many siblings did you have? I had two, two, two brothers and and three sisters. Oh, okay. It's a big family. One, two, three, four, yeah. There two. were six of us. Six. Okay. Jan Janice was born when I was a senior in high school. Oh, that's a big gap. Between. She was born in May and I graduated in June. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so really little when so, you went to school. So I, I, I knew what to expect. Okay. So I don't know that Purdue helped me. No. <laughs> Actually. Okay. Um, and did any of um, did any of your children go to Purdue? Yes, the oldest son. Okay. He graduated in sixty-eight. Okay. And how many of your family members have attended Purdue? Well, my. Brothers and sisters, all of, all six of us attended Purdue. Oh wow! Three three graduated. The other three, we did not. Okay. And they they, I, they happened to be the girls. Me and Marquita. She went into nursing school, and Janice. She got married. <laughs> okay. And then so. But there were four girls and two boys, right? right so yes. one of your sisters graduated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, she was next to me. Mm -hmm. She graduated. She was a teacher. Oh, okay. So she went through the teachers program there. Yeah, she was a home ec teacher at first, mm -hmm. and she, uh, 
where she went to where she had her got her masters not at Purdue but uh, I don't know where she had probably at uh, at school at Marshall Marshall mm, okay and, because they lived in West Virginia okay that's where she taught mm. she taught uh, zoology biology and all that <laughs> oh that's cool <laughs> um. So after after your youngest son, so you had three sons, right? Yeah, three sons. Um, after your youngest went off to school, did you re-enter the workforce? Yes, when he was in the second grade. Okay. I um, I re decided that I needed to do something, <laughs> <laughs> and and so I. But I went uh, back to work, and I worked at a Culligan water condition. I shouldn't tell you all this because. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to work for them in the office, and I worked for them for a couple years. And then the one girl was she took over the the management, and so I decided that there there's I needed to have more to do. So I went and I worked at the bank as in, as in the bookkeeping department for a couple couple years. And, and but that girl, she got married and she left. So who came back and worked at Purdue? They called me back. The people called me back and I went back. And then the man, they, the uh, owner of it, his grand his uh, nephew, I think it was, graduated in accounting from, I think he was from Florida. So he wanted a job. So he come and took my job. So I left. Really? <laughs> they just replaced you? They replaced me. Oh. And so then I went uh, to Kirby Risk. I worked for Kirby Risk. Then this... Uh, accountant, uh, he was was called asked to go to to Chicago office, the main office in Chicago. He left. So who who do they call again? <laughs> <laughs> Did you go back? <laughs> <laughs> so then, when my husband took retired young early, and, uh, he decided to, he was just wanted to do something else. He was raised and. He wanted to do something. So we moved, and uh, we ended up in um, Indianapolis. We, I won't tell you where, what happened between that, but in Indianapolis, and who called me? was a guy in Indianapolis called me and wanted to know whether I could come in and be their accountant. That's great. I worked there 13 years. Oh, that's awesome. Till I retired. Great. So, but, so but, bookkeeping uh, really was your thing. The bookkeeping really was my thing. It really was. Yeah. That's great. Um, I know, well, maybe I should tell you a little bit about Purdue. Um, my young, youngest son, the one that's here, he, uh, when he was in the second grade in school, he uh, had trouble reading, and uh, the school just, uh, well, they were beside herself because the teacher, his first grade teacher said that he was a good reader, and all of a sudden he had this, had this problem. So they worked with Purdue, so he went to Purdue as, as long as I did. <laughs> 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 he, because it, and they discovered he had uh, dyslexic. Isn't that terrible? Just went, went right out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he couldn't read. Okay. Should I ask him? That's up to you. What? Dyslexic. 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 And this was something new. 
Okay. I mean, and the, the auto people at Purdue didn't know what to do with him. <laughs> so they, he went, he, we lived on the west side, he went on his bicycle over there after school wow. for a couple of years and they worked with him. And they, now they use things that he, they discovered. <laughs> we laugh about it because his one son was, had the same thing. And, oh, okay. And, so he knows more about Purdue than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so was this at, like, there's a child development center or something? Was well, this it, at... Well, they, it wasn't that at the time. It was in the, uh, where they had their hearing and the uh, place. Of, oh, okay. So the hearing and speech. Speech, yes. Oh, okay. That's what it was. It was in the speech department. Oh, okay. And how old was he when he went... Started well, he was, in the, he was in the, he was in the, he probably started in the third or fourth grade. Okay. And he reads all the time now. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay. Um, okay, great. And then, so... Did you participate in any, like, organizations or clubs, not necessarily when you were at school, but outside of... Oh, oh yes. I, well, I belonged to the church. I have always worked in the women's groups at church. And I was a home, belonged to home ec club, extent, home, ec, home extension club. I played in the card club once for a while. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> what kind of um, women's groups did you were you involved with at the church? Well, uh, well they had a mission term. The one where it was a elder it was the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, and um, the. Um, and a quilting. I started the quilting club. That this is this was after I retired. Mm -hmm. I made banners, lots of banners. Mm -hmm. For events and stuff. Church for okay. the church. So I I kept busy. Lots of stuff. Yeah. I I did a lot of retire of, of volunteering uh, since I retired. Mm hmm So what, um, volunteering at the church? Well, I did the quilting, and I was in the quilting, and the other, uh, yes. Mm hmm And then did you volunteer, where else did you volunteer? I volunteered at the, at the Historical Society. The Tippecanoe County yes. one? Oh, okay. What did you do there? Well, let's see. Oh, I helped with it in the... In the um, uh, shop, their gift shop. But one of the most interesting things is that I helped the curators. I did some research on children's toys oh, in, the, cool. in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And I also, on, of course, it was about Lafayette, how many industries were in Lafayette mm -hmm. in 1850. 15, between 1850 and 1900, so I did a lot of looking up. <laughs> that sounds, well, right up my alley, so. <laughs> and I like history, so I... Great. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. I did that up until, see, I quit doing things about when I was 88, so. Wow. Oh. Well, I didn't have a car to go around with. <laughs> yeah, makes yeah that makes it hard to get around. Yeah. And um, so you were involved with um, the extension homemakers. Yes. And then, so what did you do as part uh, with that club? Well, I was president of the local club. I was was a uh, 
secretary, treasurer of the district for the, um, what do they call it? I guess it's like a, 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 the zone, of, it was, a lot, it was several tight, um, town counties together. Okay. I did, did that. And then I just helped with lots of things. Mm -hmm. And what kind of, um, what kind of things did the extension homemakers do? Like what activities did you do? Well, I gave lessons. Okay. When they had lessons to give, I did, did that. I was mostly I was mostly treasurer and everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really like the bookkeeping. <laughs> Great. Well, I think that's all my questions. Is there anything else that you want to add? Well, we said I said something. I think I've had everything. There were a few little things I wanted to tell you about. Yeah, that would be great. About the, the uh, what you call because uh, I thought that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the award for penmanship that you got in first grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't do things like that now, do they? Do they have? Um, well, I don't know if they teach cursive anymore. No, I think some there are some schools that are going back to it. Oh, okay. Uh, Seems to me one of my great granddaughters is they had that. Oh, okay. She's in what? She's in junior high school now. Mm -hmm. I grew up in um, Ontario, so my oh. knowledge of school, what they do in school, is a little different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet that's true. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, north of us, huh? Yes. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> so you're used to cold weather. Yes. And I in snow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so not new for me. <laughs> well, of course, we had a lot of snow, too, but at times. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so that was a cool, um, cool certificate. And then, so that was from, um, what was the name of the school again? The Sand Ridge. Sand Ridge. And that's where Elementary you went to grade school. one. That's where I went to grade one. Okay, the one room schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the photos that you have of the Shoemaker Co op are great as well. Maybe I'll get those, I'll take those and get, see that you get them, or however. That would be great. <laughs> There's some other things that are in there that I, I don't know. I have to look at them. <laughs> okay. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to add to our interview? I don't think so. Okay. I think you know pretty much my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, well, thank you so much. You're welcome.